Hey guys, how are we doing? It's Crypto Insight UK here, bringing you back a Ripple XRP video. All we're going to get into today, we're going to keep it kind of short. We're just going to talk about Ripple's new CBDC video, um, the link to the XRP, a little bit of XRP price prediction at the end, just to show you guys where I think the price could go and why I think it could go there. Um, and without further ado, I want to keep it short. As I said, we're going to get straight into it. So I'm just on Ripple's website here and I've just clicked over to this literally this page here, CBDC page, but I've just let it load because my internet's been a bit slow, so I've let it load um, before we get onto it. All I'm going to do is play this video, stop it, and talk about some certain points in the video. I uh, hope you enjoy. Look, this is uh, obviously on Ripple's CBDC page. We're going to talk about some of the things that CBDCs provide and how XRP fits into all of this. Um, I have broke this down in a, in a deeper video. If you go and check out our 20th episode of the Weekly Roundup, but I just want to make a short video about this video that Ripple have released specifically. Let's get into it. Today's global financial system is more complex than ever before. Yet as the world's economies grow, the infrastructure they rely on needs to evolve. Every nation has its own independent monetary policy and regulatory standards. But with varying system access and legacy technology, the world's financial infrastructure can seem overwhelming. At Ripple, we enable governments and central banks around the world to create new high... The first thing I just want to point out, I know it's getting into the video, but it's already displaying XRP um, on the rails, obviously showing the, like, the pesos rail, um, pesos there, and that's obviously the yen um, down there. But XRP is displayed straight away performance financial infrastructures built on blockchain technology. More specifically, we help governments build and launch central bank digital currencies or CBDCs. They are national currencies powered by modern technology that is secure, centralized and scalable. And these CBDCs will enable central banks to implement their monetary policies in more efficient and effective ways. The Ripple team brings a wealth of expertise to every new CBDC solution, working with hundreds of financial institutions, policymakers and regulators. Our solutions facilitate billions of dollars in cross-border payments around the globe. Ripple's CBDC solution is based upon one of the most reliable, sustainable and open source blockchain protocols, the XRP Ledger XRPL. The XRP Ledger technology is perfect for CBDC blockchain applications. It's fast with transactions complete in two to three seconds. It's easily customizable and programmable. It's reliable, having closed over 72 million ledgers since 2012, the ledger's native functionality for issuing digital currencies also reduces the need for bespoke programming and reduces risk. Finally, the technology is sustainable as one of the first carbon neutral blockchains. Each pilot is complete. I think that's super important that they mention that, that, that the technology is sustainable being the first carbon neutral blockchain. Uh, massive with the environmental issues and pressure that we're seeing being put on Bitcoin and the cryptos at the minute. Um, obviously, that's not hate towards them. I'm just saying that it's it's just interesting that they're addressing that narrative. Completely customizable and shaped to the needs of the central bank by an expert team. Here's how it works. Each nation's CBDC is hosted on a private version of the XRP ledger. Access by participants is granted by the administrator and fully secure. Using Ripple's CBDC solution, the central bank has full control over supply, allowing them to increase supply or redeem it. And through a standard API and multiple SDKs, integration into existing systems is simplified and suitable for traditional and non-traditional participants. Additionally, the central bank can issue other assets and allow participants like commercial banks to do so. The that part I find really interesting, that they can um, create other assets. Obviously talking about things like, or in my opinion, like sovereign debt, different derivatives, that sort of thing. And we know specifically the Bank of England have talked about exploring sovereign debt. Um, so that'd be like treasury bonds um, with distributed ledger technology. I mean, they've tested with 
uh, Ripple since 2016-17. And then that's digressing a bit, just wanted to point that out. Also something I find really interesting about this video is that you've got a company here um, almost putting an advert out to countries, not to other independent companies, private companies. We've got a company that are addressing the needs of countries at scale and um, that each country will get a private team. It's a bit of a strange advertising policy, something that we haven't really seen often before. When have you ever seen any company go and say, look, we'll help your company scale their financial system? It's a strange concept, but we know that a lot of countries, especially the top countries like, not don't want to say top countries, like, I mean, I'll take that back. I mean, like the, G, the G20, G7, so like you've got your Americas, people like that, they've been saying that they want to work with private entities to make the financial system better, essentially. And this is exactly what this is displaying. But the main thing I wanted to address from that little rant was, or ramble, was a bit about mincing other assets, not just currencies. I think that's important to take into consideration. Central Bank can also authorise who holds the currency on the ledger, whether that's held directly by consumers or through commercial banks. Transactions typically settle in seconds compared to days, making CBDCs suitable for use cases like retail points of sale. That's also important because a lot of people, because they see the front end of uh, banking at the minute, they think that their payments will settle instantly because they... They do on our screen or on our phone app, but they don't actually have instant settlement. That's one of the big things that cryptocurrency specifically, the XRP ledger is really good for because it settles transactions within three seconds. It's one of the things that XRP and cryptocurrency has over the legacy financial systems like Swift. Swift settlements can be like one to three days. Yes, it's a messaging system and it has been working all right. There is a 5% failure rate, but one of the things that XRP brings is finality. Um, and it settles payments instantly. So it's something to really take into consideration. This can open the door for real-time salary payments and collection of tax at point of sale, which gets funds to an institution or a consumer faster while eliminating debt risks. That's also extremely important and is quite revolutionary in terms of finance. If we, we could be getting paid like per second, per minute, per hour um, in a system like this, potentially, and also it, it collects tax um, at each, as it says, like point of sale or each like transaction point. It means that that money can flow. It's all about the velocity of money, the financial system. And if that money is flowing faster and more easily, can be utilized faster, we need less, net, less needs to be held in certain places. But, and I'm gonna get into this in a bit, but the volume on the network is something that really I think will um, contribute to the price of the asset. At the minute we have, different accounts holding holding money like around the world, Nostro, Vostro, those sorts of things. You see those examples being thrown around a lot and people try and make the deduction that XRP, okay, well, it moves in one second, so why does it need to be a higher price? Um, because you can move like however much money you want through XRP in one second and move it back all, all the time. But with a new financial system like this, where you're going to have maybe transactions being taken every second and the tax from there is going straight to the central bank and you're getting paid straight to your bank account all the time, instead of it being like one transaction that you can just use the same XRP for that transaction, because there's so many like microtransactions going on all the time, that's why I think that the volume on the network is so important to the, to the price of the asset in long, in long term. CBDC data is fully controlled and auditable by a central bank, allowing for its analysis in support of monetary policy and the data maintains transaction privacy while still allowing for regulators to monitor for criminal activities. Finally, a Ripple-designed CBDC can provide a means to bridge disparate currencies through XRP. Its inherent interoperability can allow for connection with other central bank ledgers for efficient cross-asset and cross-border transactions. This Again, a super important uh bit of terminology there when they say cross asset and cross border transactions so they're not just talking about fiat to fiat transactions this is when we'll see truth value for xrp in my personal opinion is when we see cbdc's on the ledger if we do obviously they're advertising for it so some are going to come on the ledger i, I would presume they're probably already creating them they are we know they're working with 50 central banks around the world obviously some of them just have to mint onto the ledger and then we'll, we should start to see some utility being unlocked remember We'll have speculative runs up until utility comes and then utility is something that will take over and in my opinion give a minimum price for an asset right now you've got odl corridors that we've talked about a lot um really plug in different illiquid uh, currencies together at some point 
we're going to get a central bank, whether that whether it is a central bank or a big retail bank, um, who will just want to plug into that network, in my opinion. It'll bring a lot of volume, but it's also going to bring a lot of like positives for whoever does that first. They're going to be able to offer like almost instant settlement to any of those nations. There's 22 countries using ODL at the minute, smaller countries. Um, they're going to be able to offer instant settlement, and that's going to be a massive benefit to them over any other comp uh, any other bank, whether that's central or retail that does that. That's a huge, huge asset that Ripple have got. One thing that I really try and address a lot in some of my videos is that they're taking that volume away from the US dollar, so it's going to be bringing um, some eyes to it, whether it's for business or whether it's for the US in general. Maybe the US are like, oh crap, we need to have some some of that. We need to be plugged into that. Or whether it's for a bank, they're like, oh, okay, we've got this company over here who are doing this, this, and this with instant settlement that no one else is doing. So it's really important to notice these things and not get footed out by the price and, and the the foot in general of it, about XRP online. So I'm just gonna let this play a bit, bit longer. I'm nearly there now. This can be done with cross issuance using XRP as a bridge currency or via cross ledger communication protocols. This so on the Ripple website where they're creating CBDCs, they're actively advertising that XRP is going to be um, an asset used for cross-border settlement, even though the lawsuit's going on in America, obviously they do not care. Um, they're showing the world what they can offer. This reduces the risk that institutions are forced to accept when transacting across multiple networks or currencies in the current system. The creation of a CBDC provides powerful benefits for the economy and people of an adopting central bank. It's technology that places trust in digital money in the hands of a central bank that can guarantee accessibility to funds and the resulting services, as is the case with cash today. The result? An improved foundation for global financial development where businesses, commercial banks and ultimately people can unlock new economic potential. Work with Ripple to build a custom pilot designed for your country or institution today. So again, that's the exciting part that they're advertising to countries like who does that like business wise, not, not many people. Um, and yeah, people don't like CBDCs because uh, they, there's a lot more control but I can argue both sides of the coin and I can do that under the video. It's not really what I'm trying to address here. It's just the fact that I'm trying to show you that um, Ripple specifically and XRP um, are looking to be involved with CBDCs. One thing now I'm going to talk about is price action. Remember this is speculative guys. Um, no one knows what's going to happen in the future. We all make our best guesses. I'm just going to talk about speculative price action here. Not even about what happens if CBDCs are introduced or like sovereign debt onto the XRP ledger, stuff like the um, government's like government bonds, two year, 10 year treasuries, whatever, five year, um, those sorts of things. If they get introduced, that, that market's massive. We've seen the, the derivatives uh, market could be up to like one quadrillion. We saw Brad Gardenhouse talk the other day about they, they wanna settle things like securities, insurance, they wanna have NFTs for like uh, carbon credits, that market's going to be huge in the future. All these sorts of things, but this we'll just talk about speculation about CBDCs, not even about those other, other aspects right now. There's something else I want to draw your attention to is this tweet from uh, 24 Hours Crypto. Back in 2018, um, XRP hit 384, so 338 here, but the market cap was 130 billion. People are saying, oh, look, it can't go up there. In 2018, it hit 380, it hit 130 billion, sorry. And this is the picture of the all-time high for XRP, $3.84. If we look back in 2017, which is uh, here, the market cap for the crypto market, let's say, got to... Let's just zoom in on that a bit more. Hang on. I'll zoom in on it so you can see it a bit better. If I can zoom in a bit closer on here. We hit, let's say, $829 um, billion. And the top... The market cap for um, crypto in general hit 2.9 trillion. So 2.9 trillion. Or we'll go for. Um, am I going to be able to do this maths? Or we'll go for 2,900 um, divided by 824 because that's in billions. Um, equals 3.15 so we hit 3.15 times higher market cap in this cycle than we did in the cycle before so that's 3.5 times if we times that by xrp's all-time high 
just to say that would be a relative move that we haven't had for whatever reason that might be because it might not move that high but it also might be because we're being held down by the price by the pressure of the xrp lawsuit etc so if we times that 3.5 which is the the difference um the multiple by the 384 that xrp um had as a previous all-time high we're out to 13 dollars 50 for an xrp price tag um so there's a way that we hit that market cap just as a simple market cap um Sorry, there's a way we hit that price point, just a simple um, market cap analogy there. It is completely speculative price action in the crypto community at the minute. We're low because of monetary policy and people don't have cash, etc. When we run up, it's mainly on speculation. The, the main utility for any crypto, in my opinion, is around XRP anyway with that ODL on demand liquidity. Um, and where can we see more speculation coming into the market or where are people going to be more free? Why are people going to be more free to spend money? We wrote about this in our weekly newsletter, uh, links in the bio, um, it's just a link to the Patreon, you're going to have a look, there's a free download of the first week itself. I talked about what I think is going to happen with monetary policy and that I think the Fed are talking a big game here. I don't actually think the Fed are going to follow through with what they're saying. And we also showed some charts about Bitcoin where we and the, the DXY, but also like Bitcoin here and where we think um, the, the price action is going to go and some things that we've noticed in general. So if you want to go and check that out, go and check it out on um, my Patreon links in the bio or in the description to this video. But yeah, that's all I really wanted to talk about here for XRP specifically. I wanted to show you this video. I think they're making big moves, Ripple, and I'm very excited for what the future holds. I'm also excited to see what happens at Swell in November with, in London with Ripple. If you enjoyed the video, guys, please share it with a friend. Uh, drop a like and a comment, and I'll speak to you in the next one. Peace up, A-Town down, as I would say.